Just like a flight plan, you have to know where you're going and how you will get there when you plan for retirement. Let Ryan Fleming help you chart out a course for your retirement with his intimate knowledge of financial planning and the airline industry. It's time for the Pilot's Advisor. Welcome to another edition. This is the Pilot's Advisor. Walter Storold here alongside Ryan Fleming. So glad that you have taken some time out to join us this week. We've got a lot of good things to talk about on today's show. In our first show of 2021, Ryan, it's great to be with you. Are you glad to not have to say 2020 anymore and that we can move on from that year? Well, sadly, we're not there yet. I know this will be the first show of 2021, but... uh... We do have another week and a half, I guess, of 2020, and the way this year has gone, it makes me nervous. Come on, Ryan. I was trying to do theater, theater of the mind, where we had already, <laughs> in, in another universe, moved on to 2021, and we're, and we're pretending. But no, you, you've got to still stay in this moment where we're actually taping the show. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah, well, you know, i gotta got to be honest about what we really have That's going right. on here. It's Christmas week. I'm sure a lot of people are getting settled in uh, for their, either settled in at their homes or for the few people that are maybe traveling to see family members. I'm sure it's going to be uh, quite a bit different than it has been in past years. Just a little bit for uh, many people. Uh, I think if any vacations are happening, they're taking on a very different shape. And uh, then lots of at-home Christmas celebrations as well for many people. And then New Year's will be interesting to see how it plays out as well. But yeah, you're right, Ryan. We're recording this right at the tail end of 2020. But uh, as people are listening to this, it'll have already turned to 2021. So Happy New Year to the listeners. But I can't say Happy New Year to you just quite yet, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, I hope you do enjoy the holidays and, and we'll catch up some more in a future episode on, uh, you know, how your holidays went and, uh, and we'll talk more about 2021 in the new year as we go forward. Uh, before we get to today's episode, we're going to be talking about retirement lifestyles. So everybody kind of has this dream or this vision about what retirement looks like for them. And often it fits into several different categories, different types of travel or living locations or hobbies to pick up. We're going to explore some of the different popular retirement lifestyles and talk about what it takes to achieve them and what financial complications come along with each of those. So we'll be chatting about that in a couple of minutes. But before we get to that, Ryan, some folks may have seen in the news uh, back in late December uh, the passing of an NFL great, uh, Kevin Green, who played for several different teams in his career, notably, uh, I believe, the Pittsburgh Steelers and um, a couple of other teams he then uh, rotated through as well. Just a, a vicious defensive player who was just really fun to watch the game. But it's also somebody who you knew personally through the years. And I was wondering if you could, uh, one, sorry for your loss of somebody close to you and that was a friend. He was gone way too young, I believe, uh, before 60 years old. And um, tell us a little about your relationship with, uh, with Kevin and your memory of him. Yeah, sadly, uh, Kevin was only 58 years old. And, uh, you know, I'm still kind of in shock from the whole thing. And, you know, my heart and, you know, prayers go out to Tara and his two kids, Gabby and Gavin, who, you know, I've spent a decent amount of time with um, previously. But Kevin was just an amazing person, full of energy, uh, very supportive of, you know, our veterans and the military. Um, his father was actually a full bird colonel in the army, so he he lived the uh, military brat lifestyle. And I was fortunate enough to meet Kevin many many years ago um, in Destin, Florida, and and uh, you know he he was at my pilot training graduation for you know my uh, pilot training for the military. I actually was invited to go to his Hall of Fame induction ceremony, which was you know an amazing experience. Um, so it's it it is it is a very sentimental and sad day. Uh, thinking about Kevin, but I mean, he touched so many people in so many ways and was just a positive, upbeat person. So KG will, uh, as I saw Bill Cower made a comment this morning or yesterday, maybe it was, that uh, he was talking about how, how much Kevin affected his lifestyle or his life. But he said that uh, Kevin just got a better defense. <laughs> I like that. And uh, and how true. I mean, uh, the guy was just, you know, you, talk, you knew him off the field, certainly. But I remember just watching him on the field and just uh, amazing the way that he would 
rally around the defense and be able to uh, make key stops at, at key times. And he was just always kind of like some of the game's great defensive leaders of today. He was that guy you never wanted to, to run the ball toward or, or take the play toward. You had to game plan around him. It was He was uh, such a fun player to watch. And then awesome that he stayed connected to, to not only the game, but the community and had a great life outside of football, it sounds like. Yeah. And, and, you know, he was completely and totally relentless. I mean, he was one of those people that had such a motor and it goes to show that regardless of your talent level with hard work and motivation and and effort, you know, you can achieve great things. And, you know, he was, that, that was Kevin Green. I mean, long, long blonde hair and he wasn't going to stop. And, uh, uh, yeah, so it's, you know, he's one of those guys, man. And the the world's going to miss him for sure. He had a good motor before we started saying that guys had good motors on on defense, right? <laughs> exactly. He he was the original good motor. So sorry again for your loss, um, Ryan, and uh, absolutely best wishes and thoughts and prayers out to Kevin Green and his family. And thank you for sharing uh, his story with us for a couple of minutes on the show today. Uh, well, certainly. And- yeah, and I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, it is a big shout out to KG. Um, and then the last thing I'd want to say is if you have not listened to his Hall of Fame speech, it, it's pretty powerful. So I'd, I'd take the five minutes. And there's actually a 30 for 30, I think, special on Kevin Green. And uh, both of them are, are must see. So take the time. Uh, Google it, YouTube it, whatever, and uh, and check it out. We'll uh, we'll link to it in the show notes of the episode. So we'll uh, we'll grab the link. We'll put it in the show notes so it's easy for you to find. So just check the show notes or the description section of the show on your podcasting app, or if you're listening on the website, you should see it right there. And we'll link to that Hall of Fame acceptance speech uh, that you were you said you were at uh, that speech, right? I was, I was, and, and and Walter, that's why you get paid the big bucks, you know, <laughs> to copy and paste a link. Yeah, to link. Yep, link it all. <laughs> well, very good. Thank you, Ryan, for uh, those thoughts and uh, a little bit of a trip down memory lane. I certainly remember watching Kevin growing up. Uh, well, he certainly, uh, after retirement in the NFL, uh, did lead uh, a great lifestyle, one that was very active, uh, going on to participating in coaching and, like you said, supporting veterans. And it's a good transition into our conversation about uh, us, us everyday folks who didn't play in the NFL but still get to maybe pursue and achieve our retirement dreams. And so let's talk a little bit about that on today's show, Ryan. Um, have you thought about what life is going to look like for you in retirement? Do you know the financial implications of some of your goals and dreams and the lifestyle that you want to lead? You need to have a discussion about those kinds of things. And so hopefully what we talk about on today's show will spark some thought and uh, give you the chance to maybe look at your financial situation and see does it match up with what your retirement goals and lifestyle might end up being. So Ryan, I know you not only uh, are you living the lifestyle of flying all over the world um, you know, with your line of work, of course, as many of our listeners do as well, and, but you also like to travel personally, too. I have a feeling that before we dive into these different lifestyles, that uh, are you going to like uh, when you retire one of these days? I know it's uh, you know down the line a little bit. Are you going to continue to jet set around the world? Or are you going to be that guy that goes the complete opposite and settles, settles on a lake on a front porch and never does anything the rest of his life because he's like, I've done enough travel? Well, I'm definitely going to settle on a lake. That's been decided. But, you know, Walter, I'm, I'm trying to stay married. So I do what my wife tells me we're going to do. So it's it's her li- retirement lifestyle that counts, right? <laughs> well, I I travel enough that the last thing I want to do when I get home from a trip is go travel some more. But you know you got to do what you got to do, and uh, the family needs to travel as well. So I I just kind of go with the flow. We'll say. Yeah, that's a that's a wise choice, my friend. Wise choice to go with the flow in those situations. All right, so uh, here's one particular lifestyle that I think is uh, relatively common these days. In fact, my folks fall into this category. They want to do the two house solution or the the two home solution uh, is you know maybe they they own one and rent the other maybe own two homes but basically you live half the year in one place half in the other uh, is that pretty common among the clients that you work with that they like to have kind of two different places where they you know live out their retirement years and kind of split their time like that I think it's a very common thing and but I think it's a conversation piece too because there's a lot of people that don't own two houses and just snowbird or rent. And I think that is a conversation, you know, to have, you know, because maybe you don't want to go to that second house every single year to that same place. You know, there's other people that would rather rent and check out new places, you know, to snowbird, we'll say, you know, rather than going to Florida every year, maybe we want to go to Arizona one time, or maybe we want to go to Santa Fe or, you know, down in Texas. So if that's what you want to do and you want to see new places, then it might not make sense to own two houses, let alone, you know, when you do own two houses, that doubles your expenses. 
Is it a uh, a month amount of months kind of thing? Like uh, if you're going to be six and six, then maybe owning makes more sense. Whereas if it's going to be you know nine and three months split, then the three it makes more sense to probably you know do the rentals and that kind of thing. I would agree with that because um, if you're doing a six and six, that opens up a whole other can of worms to discuss. Because if you're willing to do six months in a state like Tennessee or a state like Florida. Uh, you know, there's tax implications there. Those are tax-free states or Texas. So if you're willing to just be in one location for six months out of the year, it really, really does make sense to uh, maybe look at one of those states that has tax-free income. Is uh, this a realistic goal for many of the people that you work with to do the two home solution? How long do people uh, end up being able to maintain that lifestyle? Is it one that eventually wears out and they just settle on, on one home at a particular age or time in their lives? Well, I think it's I think it's one of those tough questions because, you know, one of the best things I can do or the best things that people can do for retirement is knowing what their goals are and what their retirement looks like because then I can help them work towards getting to that retirement. However, it's hard not to kind of give my opinion on certain these certain things uh, you know, to to my clients. And you know, I look at it as the older I get, the more I want to simplify my life. Hmm. And, you know, the more houses, the more, you know, bills you have, the more, you know, property taxes you're paying, the more insurance, oh, the air conditioner went out, you know, it just creates some, uh, some complications. And especially, you know, your initial retirement, you're in your go-go years where it's not as much of a problem and you're probably getting down there. But what happens when things start slowing down and you start having some medical issues and suddenly you're not able to make it to that vacation home as much as you would like, but yet you're still having, you know, to take care of that house, whether it's the yard, whether it's the, you know, the HVAC system, whether the ca- the roof needs repaired, you know, it's always something with, uh, with rental property. So um, these are just the things to consider. Have you ever wanted to learn more about the academic approach to investing and saving and planning for retirement that Ryan talks about here on the Pilots Advisor? Well, if so, go visit pilotsadvisor.com pilotsadvisor.com. You can watch a quick webinar on the academic approach to investing. It'll show you how not to speculate and gamble with your money. It's all based on Nobel Prize winning research. It only takes about 10 minutes to get through the video and watch it. going to be worth your time, I promise you. Go check it out right now, pilotsadvisor.com. It's a webinar that covers that academic approach to investing, pilotsadvisor.com. All right, back to the show. The two house solution, certainly one retirement lifestyle. Let's go to another one, Ryan. Let's talk about the RV life. I know a few folks who have have done this. Uh, They want to kind of sell everything. They move into the RV, hit the open road, but nobody seems to be able to sustain that life for very long. It's it's more just like you you need to budget for one big extended year-long trip, but then probably need to have a backup plan. I'd probably agree with that. I mean, there's definitely people that do the RV thing, or another one that is uh, popular amongst uh, pilots is you know, buying a, a boat that they want to live on and, and sail the world or, you know, sail the Caribbean. But I, I agree with you that it's one of those ones that it, it seems great. And then suddenly after you do it for a year, it kind of starts to lose its appeal or you've seen enough with the United States. And now it's like, all right, let's uh, what's next. We're ready to settle down. Too much of a good thing. Maybe in, in that situation, RV life can carry you to a lot of cool places, but eventually you may get tired of that open road lifestyle. So maybe don't plan to live in the RV for all of retirement, have some backup plans if uh, that's the case. Uh, what about the front porch style? We talked about you, you know, uh, <laughs> going to the lake, sitting on the front porch. And hey, that's a goal of some people. They, they've been on the accelerator their entire lives. They're ready to hit the brakes a little bit and, and relax. I think economically, this probably makes for the uh, easiest retirement lifestyle to achieve. It's probably the most predictable. Um, The one thing that I'd caution against with this, I mean, you know, there's a a meme out there that talks about the older I get, the more I appreciate just doing nothing. You know, like you talked about sitting in the the rocking chair, sitting on the porch and watch the the cars go by or the world go by. Drinking your sweet tea or your unsweet (laughs) tea, depending on where in the country you are. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. The the one caution I have with this, and it's, it's a sad thing to watch. But I really worry about those individuals that don't have some sort of a hobby or a passion or or uh, some motivation for retirement, because you can really get in a bad rut, an unhealthy rut, if you don't have something to wake up for every day. And you know it's 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 unfortunate, but you see those individuals that that don't have some motivation to get up, and they normally end up having health issues earlier and 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 pass earlier as well. So I caution against that. 
an object in motion stays in motion, and uh, I think that's very true when it comes to retirement and, and the people that I've seen go through their retirement years. If they were busy uh, leaning into retirement, they kind of stay that way in retirement, finding things to do and ways to continue to have purpose in life, and it, it pays dividends. It keeps them sharper and healthier longer, and you can still sit and relax on the front porch for a few hours every night just you know, before you go sit on the front porch and relax, you know, do a few productive things and have some purpose in the day. So important, and uh, continue to underscore that. Well, hey there. We hope you're enjoying listening to The Pilot's Advisor today. Just wanted to take a quick moment from the show to remind you that if you have any questions ever about what Ryan talks about on the program, need any assistance with your financial planning, need some guidance to get to and through retirement, or whatever financial questions might be on your mind, don't ever hesitate to reach out. The simple way to get in touch with Ryan is to pick up the phone and call or text 843 475-3038. Again, that's 843-475-3038. You can also find Ryan online at FlemingFG.com. That's FlemingFG.com. And as always, we put contact information to get in touch with Ryan in the description or the show notes section of the program. So just check it out on whatever app you're using, and it's easy to get in touch with Ryan. All right, now back to the show. What about the college town? I feel like this one was popular maybe a couple of years ago. My grandparents were even looking at this as a possibility for quite some time, where they were thinking of moving closer to a college town, and the idea being they can get good health care, access to concerts, sporting events, that sort of thing. Are college towns still on the on the in when it comes to the retirement lifestyle? Uh, for me personally, I don't hear this one very often. Um, I think it's more of a... Uh uh, unintended consequence of, you know, maybe they settle in a town that actually does have a college in that town, and then they're able to take advantage of the football games, the, you know, the shows, the, you know, st- stuff that is around a college town. But I very rarely do I have clients that are like, oh, we're moving to this place because of the college. Yeah, I just don't, I don't, I don't see many people chasing a college town from my experience. I think maybe my opinion is uh, skewed of that one from having done broadcasting at uh, University of North Carolina doing the women's basketball for several years. A lot of the fans that I met uh, met specifically moved to Chapel Hill so that they could participate in the athletics events. Like that was their entertainment. They got season tickets to all the sports and they would go to all the games. They would go to all the coaches shows and all of the festivities and activities and the meet and greets. And that just you just become fully invested. Now, for a lot of them, it was their alma mater, so that had a little yeah. bit of uh, a little bit of part of the lean to it. Well, I'd be all about that, but my life, my wife would hate me. So you know, because I I, I could <laughs> go to a bunch of sporting events and have a good time. That's but you right. know what? What I actually see a little bit is is people definitely want to move where their kids are going to school. I see that a lot. You know, where their kids pick a college, wherever that might be, and then you kind of see the parents kind of follow them there. And then they might end up settling in that town just because they get, you know, kind of get their their feet dug in again after three or four years of being there. But, yeah, so I I could see that. But, you know, once again, it it really comes back to just knowing what you want in retirement. And if you haven't had these conversations with your significant other or you haven't sat there on the porch and daydreamed about it, it's probably one of the most important things you can do is to really define what your dream is of retirement and how you want it to look. That's a great point. Have that discussion. And uh, if you need some help having that discussion, don't hesitate to reach out to Ryan and the team at Fleming Financial Group, serving you worldwide based out of Georgia. Uh, You can call 843-475-3038, 843-475-3038. You can also text Ryan at that number or go to FlemingFG.com to get in touch. A few more examples here, Ryan. I'm going to lump these next two together, but we can and we can talk about them at the same time. Florida, that's an obvious one. Lots of people, you know, that's that's been the long-term one, right? Everybody wants to move to Florida these days, and it has been that way for quite some time. And then many who live uh, move down there then live the golf course lifestyle. Some folks want to live on that golf course and just pick up that hobby 24-7, and I guess that can come with some expense, but uh, we, we like the activity level there, right? Well, for sure. And, you know, I, I never got the, the golfing bug, but it's definitely a thing. And it definitely comes with uh, increased expenses, you know, being a part of the club. And then, of course, if you're going to play nine or 18 with the boys, then next thing you know, you're at the club, you know, spending more money. But it's definitely a, a very, very social retirement, which is, is great for those individuals that, that do fall in love with golf. And, and I agree with you. Once again, you know, activity, get out and do, do something. 
and uh, a lot of those golf course communities also have, you know, many, many other social activities involved at the clubhouse as well. And with Florida, you not only the weather, but you talk about activities. Well, Florida has pretty much everything, water activities all around, the villages, the social life, uh, warm weather. Uh, there's lots to like about uh, Florida from a retiree's perspective. Well, tax-free uh, state as well. That's that has a, something that's to do with thing. it, I guess, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, you, you'd, be, you'd be surprised how many people decide where they want to end up, you know, pilots in, in particular, uh, decide where they want to end up with the conversation starter of tax-free state. Makes a big difference uh, when your income is of a certain level, that's for sure. Uh, those dollars start to pile up in terms of savings when you make wives' financial moves that way. So that definitely becomes part of the conversation. Last but not least, one other retirement lifestyle to discuss today. Those who, maybe it's not a place, it's not uh, not necessarily a lifestyle really, but it's a passion that they now get to follow that maybe they couldn't in their working years. And that becomes what retirement is all about. So we'll kind of call that a lifestyle on the show today. Yeah, once again, just having something that you're passionate about or something that you want to do in retirement, something that you were never didn't have the time to do while you're you're working in your uh, original career and you know, I, I gosh, I hear it all. You know, woodworking, I want to build airplanes, um I want to own a farm, I want to have horses. Um so, you know, life's too short. I mean, you know, and it comes back to to this year in particular that you know life is too short and you need to live it and do it all those things that you always talked about doing get that bucket list out and start accomplishing those goals absolutely if you want to bring your bucket list to ryan talk a little bit about how you're going to accomplish some of those things that's all part of the planning process and if you're curious how it begins well it usually just starts with a simple conversation about things like this like we've talked about on the episode today what what are you looking to do in retirement what's your situation where do you live right now where do you want to go Addressing some of those beginning questions then leads to the revealing financial analysis and getting a plan together. So call or text to get in touch with Ryan to begin that conversation today. 843-475-3038 is the number. That's 843-475-3038. Or you can go to FlemingFG.com. That's FlemingFG.com and get in touch with us through the website as well. Ryan, thank you so much for the help on the program today. Enjoyed the conversation with you, and uh, we'll look forward to another episode with you soon. Sounds wonderful. And even though it's not yet, to everybody that's listening to this, Happy New Year. You've been listening to The Pilot's Advisor, featuring Ryan Fleming, a financial advisor at Fleming Financial Group, serving clients worldwide, but based out of Charleston, South Carolina. If you have any questions for Ryan on what we've talked about on today's show, maybe a future topic idea, or want to talk more about getting a complimentary review of your financial plan, here's the best ways to get in touch. You can go online to the website, FlemingFG.com. That's FlemingFG.com. You can also email Ryan. It's simply ryan at flemingfg.com. Or you can call or text to get in touch. 843-475-3038 is the number. That's 843-475-3038. Thanks for listening to The Pilot's Advisor. And don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcasting apps. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, and many more locations. So whatever app you like to use, search for the Pilots Advisor podcast today and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Information is for illustrative purposes only and does not constitute tax, investment, or legal advice. Always consult with a qualified investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.